what? I guess I'll tell her. Uh, well. I guess I'll tell the Ruthie B. <laughs> but anyway, I gotta change this thing here. The sensor. It could either be the sensor or or the uh, um, what do you call it? Not the motor, but the uh, hub. And, um, I can't see the hub, but what I can see looks fine. So I'm just gonna assume that it's uh, the sensor. And so this sensor on the Cadillac, mm. and what's it supposed to sense? Well, it's a wheel speed sensor, and, but uh, when one goes out, it shuts off the ABS system, the wheel speed system, the ride system. The whole car's got a computerized ride system on it. So it's got a, a sensor, it's got a system on there that, that adjusts for the ride of the road. Uh, sport mode or whatever, so it's got uh, ABS and uh, tire. Um, uh, anyway, so it has a lot of stuff connected to the the speed sensor, and when it goes off, it shuts all that stuff off. And so the car doesn't ride as nice, it doesn't stop as nice because it shuts the AB ABS off too. And uh, so you can drive it. It's just the car isn't going to perform like it should. I'm sorry. So we purchased this car in 2017 because we bought it in the, the, we went to California in 2018 and we, we had it the year, we bought it in May, May five years ago. We bought it in May of 2017 and then we went to California in June of 2018. So we used this uh, Cadillac CTS uh, for our um, road trip to California. So this is the first time in five years that you've had an issue then with it. Yeah. And this is a 2008 model. Yeah. Yeah, this is a 2008 Cadillac CTS and we purchased it uh, in 2017. Did you say this is the most expensive car you've ever bought? Yeah. I bought it for 11 grand plus interest, so whatever that was. Um, you got, There's your old sensor. You got, old sensor? You got to have. Where's the new one at? So it's just called a sensors? Yeah, let me have it. Well, if you're not working on the truck, you're working on the Cadillac, or you're working on a motorcycle, you've just always got something going on. We're working on a woman. Yeah. Got to work on the woman, too. Come around here. Just put your foot right there. Right here. Right there. Okay. Now, I saw somebody asking the question the other day uh, that it was replacing this sensor, and they were looking at... Uh, that's weird that rub spot right there where'd that come from it's coming from here that's weird that's, i mean this thing's fresh out of cadillac like that so look at that there's bolts rubbing up against that spring there oh rub the paint off but anywho so i saw this guy asking a question while looking at a video on this sensor and he said oh golly gee my goodness does anybody know how to get that cable out for that sensor yes I did. all you do sir is you go like this with some uh, wire cutter you put it up underneath the thingy like this slide it up under there, and you pop it and it will pop right out that's all you gotta do and then when you get ready to put it back in you just slide them back in see so whoever that feller was there's the answer to your question that's how you get the cable out for the sensor, speed sensor on the uh, 
a 2008 Cadillac CTS. Well, okay. Not the V model, but the... CTS. That's right. I'd like to have a V model. That'd be... Is that an upgrade? That'd be a far out car. Is a V model an upgrade from a CTS? Yeah, it's got a V8. It's basically a race, race car Cadillac. Mm -hmm. <laughs> This one back here is a little rough because uh, you can't see it. And then this one here, if I can remember where it went. Don't remember where it went. I thought, it, yeah, it goes right there. There it goes. I need a couple more elbows and my fingers. Uh-uh. Oh, a hole right here. Wow. I know you're there because I saw you. Get, get. Ha. Uh -huh. Okay, you gotta you gotta stick your finger in there backwards like that and wiggle it in. Did you just flip me off? <laughs> Just telling you how you got yeah. it done. Yeah, he just flipped me off, ladies and gentlemen. And that's how you get her done. <laughs> All right, well, find this plug them up here. I put this plug way up there, where you gotta have Chinese hands. Chinese hands. <laughs> I spotted it. I hear the, the something. Yeah, I hear an ambulance. And an ambulance is not common for our area. I mean, we don't live in the city, we live in the country. And so when you hear an ambulance around here, um, it's probably somebody you know. It's not like being in the inner city. And there it is, it's plugged them in. So just like that, it's been done. The only thing that I'm concerned about, although it's got a hundred thousand miles on it like that, is how that bolt been rubbing up against that spring like that. Not that it's gonna be a problem. Where is that? Earl. Okie dokie. Yeah, that done. ambulance is getting louder and louder. Check my CV joint. It's got a little weepage on it. Awesome. Well, this dude got 100,000 miles on this car. Uh, it's got, I mean, it doesn't have any rust to speak of, but it's got more than it should. Where did that go? Oh yeah. That's Where right. would that come from? Apparently, whoever had it before I had it drove it up north, got it in some salt. I would say, and there's nothing to uh, really speak about, but being that it's been a garage kept car for the last six years, it shouldn't have any rust on it. So whoever had it before I had it, must have drove it up north. I got it with what, 76,000 miles on it? I'd have to look at the paperwork. I don't recall offhand. I'm not, I'm just, it was nine years old when we got it. It was nine. Okay. Again, I don't see anything wrong with the hub, but I'll know as soon as I put it in gear. All right, well, that's been changed. So, I don't have to concern myself with that anymore unless the sensor don't go off and then I'll have to change the hook. I mean, the, uh, if the light doesn't go off, then I'll have to change the hook.
anytime you don't have a jack stand under the car, you uh, doggone, I got my tire dirty. I don't like that. That makes me a little upset. So if you don't have a jack, you put a tire underneath? Yeah, I put the tire under there. So that the car doesn't fall on you? Yeah. Well, if it falls, it'll fall on the tire. Just a little something I do. If you don't put a jack stand. I've had a car fall on me in this here garage. Uh, little Ford Escort Ruthie used to have. I got brought home from California. I didn't realize that car fell on you. Yeah, I was sitting here working on one day. It fell from over here, over there. Really? How did well? How did you get out from underneath that? I didn't, I didn't say that. Did I say I was underneath it? You said it fell on you. I said it fell, and I didn't say it fell on me. Well, that's how it came across. I said it fell. I had a car fall. Is what I said. For any of those who are dreaming up drama, I had a car fall in here because it doesn't have a concrete floor. Yeah, that's one thing that we've wanted for a very long time. As long as we've lived here for 17, 18 years, we don't have a concrete floor. If we ever start making money on YouTube, I guess that's going to be one of the first things that we buy, right? Is a concrete floor? I uh, doubt that. You doubt that? Yeah, I doubt that. I'd like to build a shop so I can work on my things. When I got rid of the peak, my original plans was to uh, buy and fix and sell Peterbilts because I have been working on them. My last three trucks before I got this one were uh, all Peterbilts. And so because I've been driving them, and I've basically been driving Pete's since I first started driving her in the 80s. I just really like them. And uh, so anyway, I didn't start driving for a living though until 92. And I've drove all kinds of stuff since then. But my favorite truck has always been the, the 379. And I own three of those. And anyway, my original plan was, is when I sold my last 379, was to build a shop and buy, fix, and sell 379s. Because I had worked on them so much, I knew them inside and out. Every inch of it. So, anywho... That didn't come about, and then I was going to do something else, and that didn't come about. And and it was this time last year that we bought the Freightliner. Yeah, well, I figured I had to make some money somewhere. I went out and acquired me a alone and I was gonna buy this uh, anyway it was another Freightliner it was only like 10 years old well okay so anyway so I got it from him I didn't want to buy a Freightliner but it did the good thing is it's a good truck but anyway I got this old girl now and uh, people like it uh, I never did like freight liners, uh, but uh, basically underneath the hood, it's the same thing as the Peterbilt was. It's got a 3406E cap. It's got a 15 speed and it's got, uh, I believe 336 rears on this dude. Why don't you and, open the hood up? And uh, Why don't I open the hood? Oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> well, why don't you just open it up? You're talking about it, so open it up. I can't. Oh, you gotta take the latches down. But anyway, this motor here is a 3406E. It's not a C15 like my other motor on the on the Pete. But I did have a Pete, uh, a 96 Pete that looked just like my 05 Pete. They you couldn't tell them apart unless you know what you're looking at. <laughs> 